people um, on them. So if one of them vibrates, you know they want to talk. Isn't that how that works? No, I guess not. <laughs> no, they raise their hand. They raise their hand. Yeah, I, I can see it here. He's laughing. Uh, so any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay. I have an item that, needs, that should be added, and that's um, to talk about the, the clerk's position. Oh, yes. The clerk okay. Oh, we lost our clerk again? Anything else? Not here. Who's taking notes? No, I think that's probably it. Okay. Hmm. Oh, well, we, we have a, a orcas here, so we have a video. Uh, True. Yeah. Okay, um, public comment. Can I make a public comment? Sure. Is it now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Steve Knowlton. Uh, I serve on the board of Washington Electric Cooperative. And um, we have interacted, I should just say, kind of to the point, we have submitted a proposal for a broadband innovation grant from the Department of Public Service. This is the round of grants followed the ones that, that you are eligible for. This is one that's uh, eligible for uh, electric utilities only. So we have submitted a, uh, a grant for a feasibility study and a uh, business plan. I think the to my reading, the, uh, the requirements of the grant and what comes out of it are the same as what uh, the CUDs were applying for. Uh, so we've submitted the proposal, and um, I should say at the outset that um, Washington Electric has considered w at great length the uh, <clears throat> the report that was issued by the Department of Public Service on the role that electric utilities can play in uh, assisting broadband. Um, frankly, you know, the, what they presented for WEC was not a pretty picture. I don't know if, you've, if any of you have read that, that uh, report, but it's, a, it's worth reading. Uh, the costs to, uh, and the risk that brings to WEC uh, or any rural utility are going to be significant. So. We realize that at this, you know, in proceeding further, we're going to have to be innovative and creative and, I believe, uh, collaborative. So uh, as I stated when I wrote the proposal, I stated quite clearly that uh, we believe that Washington Electric is going to be, if it's going to be able to participate um, beyond what they're legally required to do, uh, they're going to be seeking collaborative uh, efforts with uh, CUDs, EC fiber, CV fiber, and whatever, whatever emerges from the Northeast Kingdom. So essentially I'm just providing a status report of where Washington Electric is and where it's going to be proceeding. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or other comments? I have a question. Where is that report available? Or where can I find it? Uh, I can send you, I can send CV fiber a copy. So it's on the department yeah. site. Is it on the department site already? Public service. Yeah. Okay. Public service. Did you know what it's called? Uh, I have. I since I haven't looked on their site. Okay. It's essentially what you know. If you Google Walk, Washington Electric, uh, I'm sure you can do this right now. <laughs> I mean, the deadline. The deadline was close of business yesterday, so I'm actually a little bit surprised that it's on the website already. But I'm happy. Well, the, the report's been on the website since January. But, uh, oh, oh, the, oh I'm sorry. I'm he's sorry. I, he's asking about the Magellan report. The Magellan report's yes. at, on the website. And it's uh, right on the front page, the little bird that's right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. okay. My apologies. I misunder misunderstood yes. your question. <laughs> a feasibility study of electric companies offering broadband in Vermont. Okay, that's hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I, One comment. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Um, the Magellan report, as with all reports made assumptions and a lot of the assumptions were quite expensive I think at some point we need to talk with WEC about less expensive ways of doing what they're talking about which makes it less dire mm -hmm. that's it I, I accept that that point uh, when you read the report you have to read the assumptions in with it uh, I mean if it was a slam dunk against doing it at all we 
might not have pursued it, but we we think there are opportunities. Sure. I just so the last time I remember talking to somebody from your organization here in a meeting there was some disagreement on the board as to whether to pursue this or not. Is going for this grant kind of a tacit approval of pursuing a partnership or doing fiber on your lines? H has that dissension been um, mitigated? Um, <clears throat> difference of opinion, I should say. I would say rather than dissension, I would say there's uh, there's not clarity. Um, what the board approved was they approved um, a couple a couple members of the board were approved to go investigate broadband and seek funds for doing feasibility studies. So I think we can. I guess the best I can do is say uh, we're going to do the feasibility study and and see where it, see what it comes up with. I mean, we're looking for avenues forward. We just, um, I, I doubt that there's no board approval or disapproval at this point yet. Okay. Thank you. How we're going to proceed. Thank you. Um, just a piece of housekeeping before we get into the bulk of the agenda. Because we have two people on speakerphone, it would be great if you could say your name before you speak so that it's a little bit easier for them to know who's, uh, who's having the conversation. So, Okay, thanks. Um, the next item is Treasurer's Report. I thought I saw Nathan here, but nope. I guess not. Uh, well, I, can, we'll, I can take that one. You can take that? Okay. Yes, I'll take that. So, um, Nate, Nathan and uh, Susan, Josh, Ray, and Bob Burley all reported to me that they will not be here tonight. Um, and there's another sort of practical matter. Um, who is going to be taking responsibility for the minutes? I mean, I know we have Orca recording there, so you can have to go back. But I'm, I'm taking. This is Chuck. I'm taking notes. Did you hear that? Thank you. Chuck's got it. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Um, so, uh, two two main things. To, um, to report, first of all, um, nothing much has changed in the, in the bank account. Um, second of all, in the process of changing uh, changing treasurers and me handing the check over to, I thought I had handed it over to Nathan, the Think Vermont Innovation Grant check did not get deposited and is not, um, is not currently anywhere where we know where it is. So I, I've reached out to ACCD to cut that check so that we can uh, give this another try. Um, really? Let's see what else. I'm still waiting for checks to be uh, to be shipped and arrive at my house. If I don't see them by the time I get back um, back home, I will be uh, I'll be going visiting them, visiting BSCU myself. Okay. Um, the last item is um, I would like to make a motion to approve. Um, us paying our, our attorney bill in the amount of four hundred and twenty dollars. So we did that. I don't remember. There was a question about whether we had already done that. Um, so I'm, I, I, I think we had we had sort of approved that this, this to go ahead with that. I think we had a an estimate. I, I'm not sure we had a motion. I think just just to. Yeah, I think you're right that there was a there was a motion to approve the spending, but not a specific uh, motion to actually pay the bill. So, okay. Okay, well, I, I have that actually that actual number right here in front. Of okay. Me. And it's so you're making the motion uh, to pay the attorney's bill in the amount of four hundred and twenty dollars. Four hundred and twenty. Twenty. Four twenty. Second. The so move and second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Cool. And that's really all I have for the uh, treasurer's report. I have another um, a message from Nathan saying, um, unfortunately, still with his ongoing workload, he's still at work right okay. now. So okay. He was not able to attend tonight. Got it. Okay. Good. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, what was the last thing? What's that? Didn't hear him. But he's I know it's it's this is Nathan tough to hear. Is stuck at work. Oh, it's yeah, thing. and you heard the part about the um, what was the thing for Vermont grant check? 
got is gone somewhere. Yeah. But it's going to be recaught and. Uh, it's a new thing. It's a, yeah, right. No. <laughs> Megaphone. Really? Jeremy, say something. Yep, I'm here. Is that easier to hear? Better. A little better? Got another one? <laughs> wow. Wow, this is this is incredibly high tech. I don't know if I can see This that. is internet at its best. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you need a string. We're just yeah, using a string. <laughs> you need a string between them. So I, I didn't bring any twine, but next time I'll know better. Okay. Um, you know, they're probably wondering, why, why what is they, everybody what are they there? laughing about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't want to belabor it, but why do we have to approve um, writing checks for things that we've already approved? It's a, it seems like the, technically you know, public it was bodies. Or Ten thousand, I get it. Mm. Technically public bodies, and usually, like with a town or a school district, they have a series of warrants, uh, as they're called, okay. which with a whole series of checks, um, some places hand them around and look at them. We don't have much. So I think it's probably the first thing that we've paid. So I think that's why we're just doing it as an individual item. So going forward, all of our expenditures we're going to have to make. I would assume so, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, there, there is a work around that. Individual expenses, I mean, speaking from the experience of town government uh, and being chairman of the select board, if there is a budgeted item for it, it can be treated in aggregate as a budget. In other words, we'll have a capital expenditure well forget capital expenditures that's a separate account but if if you have lawn maintenance that's a little budget line item that's voted for lawn maintenance and you can write all the checks you want up to and including the amount approved at the town meeting if it's an individual request regrettably it has to be approved in amount and designee individually hmm. okay so in this case, we have a budgeted item of legal expenses we do, um, and it, the, this is not something we've talked about before, and I think um, a good discussion to have with the treasurer. Um, I know being on the, on the select board in Middlesex, I think our treasurer would not want to do that. No. Um, she'd want to have the bookkeeper cut the warrant and her review it and present it to the for, select for board. For which I did. I'm All of them. Really, so yes. every time you got a fuel bill, Absolutely. The sex would want to do that. Absolutely. My condolences to her. I, and the I, I, I know, but yeah, we we do. We review, we review the whole list. We budget, of, uh, for instance, we budget so. fuel. Yeah. And up to and including the budgeted amount, write the check and keep and the vendor happy. Keep going. Okay. Um, we, 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 we did that in Berlin the same way. You do? So. Okay. This is Siobhan. Yeah. The Finance Committee and dis met and discussed this and brought a policy forward to the board, and the board voted to adopt the policy. The policy was that up to a set amount, the executive committee could just authorize payment. I can't remember what that exact amount was, but I think it was on the order of $200. So this would have exceeded that amount anyway. But the finance committee did consider this okay. and bring a policy forward, but I can't remember where it lives. I'd have to find it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Anything else on finance uh, issues as we move forward? But I, again, I think this is something we probably need to have some more discussion about just to determine how this board wants to uh, wants to function. Um, so the next item is Rob Fish from DPS. Rob, That's hi, welcome. Hi, everybody. Where would be a good place to go for? Oh, right in the middle. Phone? Right in the middle? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> just right over there. Anywhere over there. I know. Come up here. It's fire. Yeah. 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 I have been spending the last few months getting up to speed and learning an awful lot about the various policies in the state, the various policies lacking in the state, understanding the data and meeting with groups all around the state that were in the first, the earlier phase of creating a cut. I spent a lot of time down in Wyndham County, a little bit up in the Kingdom, Lamoille County. There's a lot happening out there. Uh, but you all took care of that last year and the year before. 
So I'm here tonight to learn more about what you are doing, where you are at, what's happening with the feasibility study, and how I can help, ideally. So I just want to keep it mostly just back and forth with questions and answers, and I'll do what I can. Well, you're going to hear a lot more, I think, with some of the reports that are um, being presented tonight. So. So uh, Rob's already seen a pre preview of some of my <laughs> questions, but anyway, I guess I want to know more about what the role, your role is, and the department's role in supporting CUDs with grant applications, with um, finding sources of money, um, giving us you know templates from someplace else that's done something similar, or communication plans, anything like that. I don't know what your the scale of what you're offering or not being able to offer. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out, actually. Uh, but the, the line seems to be as I'm here for, I can do a lot of hand-holding. I can point groups in the correct direction. I can help with some research questions. But I'm not going to sit there and write the grant for you, if that's a, if that's a good way to demarcate it. I think part of, part of it is going to be the there's data that the department has. And what of that data is available to CUDS and is there mechanisms for CUDS to get in, get access to data that the public doesn't have access to? I will let you know question. when I have an answer to that question, because <laughs> it is certainly, take home. <laughs> uh, it, it's an ongoing discussion. A lot of, much of the data that we have is covered by non-disclosure statements where we're not allowed to reveal the, pro the provider's name or it was provided under a condition that we don't just hand it over. I am, in the early stages of conversations to see what we can do to strip away any information that would be protected from that to provide CUDs and really just the public more information on what's available. Like currently on the website, there are other PDF versions of the, the coverage maps. Well, why can't that be interactive to where you can really zoom in and see what the coverage is in an, in an area? Uh, we are going to be publishing new uh, cable maps for the cable layer and the fiber layer. Uh, that should be happening relatively soon. We just finished our the 2019 update of the broadband availability. Uh, it's up on the, it's up on the website now. If you haven't checked it out, we read it that page, uh, and that's with better data from the providers. Uh, we're happy to say uh, it's just the, the version of the 4.1 map was finally put in PDF format and is up there today. So if you want, feel free to take a look. Uh, but in terms of the other larger data questions and making it available, like personally, I'm a firm believer in that you should get as much data out there as possible. Uh, but we are the state government, and sometimes to acquire that data, have to make agreements to, to limit it. Do you have in place any checks to confirm that the data that's being provided to you is in fact accurate. The reason behind my question is when I look at some of the maps of the town of Elmore, I know there's nothing where the little red dots appear. So, well, I mean, I, as, uh, as was said by a very famous politician years before you were born, trust but verify. <laughs> so nothing in terms of structures or nothing in terms of coverage? Both. Both. Well, the, the database of uh, premises uh, comes from the E911 uh, database. In terms of the data, it does come from the providers. And we do know that the data that was provided from, from for Consolidated this year is quite a bit better. So I encourage you to check the new map and see if that's still the problem. Uh, if not, do send me an email, and I'll forward it to who made it's, the map. Uh, it, and I, the, I'll use whatever data is provided. I've always found that in the interest of science and running a business, you want to get a tie point or two to prove that what you're receiving from the various feeder organizations is in fact correct. We are and more every, confident they know about you're the data this year. They'll make but sure to make uh, the data a uh, much higher integrity. I, I think that's why the data integrity increased this year. There's still, there's still certainly there's always going to be problems, and it's that's Rattle for that reason. Point. Trust but verify. <laughs> it works. So, and that's and that's one of the reasons why we don't have wireless. We aren't showing wireless data on the map because we can't have the various providers can't tell us what the actual coverage is at a certain location at a certain speed. Do you have, have fixed wireless on the map? I don't believe we do. No, take it off. 
I, I don't, yeah, I don't believe it is on there. Feel, feel free to check and prove me wrong right now. Hey, you okay. uh, broadband availability yeah, sure maps. Yeah, you go to the yeah. public service department website in the left-hand column. You'll yeah. see it as one of the one of the menu options, and that'll show the the new maps. Uh, we also included it this year in the interest of making the data more available. Rather than just having a PDF of the spreadsheet, the actual spreadsheets are there, so you can you can do what you want with the data as opposed to having to type it all over again. Huh. Okay. Baby steps. That's good. So I'm assuming you're just going to hang out and listen to uh, Certainly what's I'm going on. Certainly, I'm willing to take uh, additional questions. Uh, I also have, I, I know there's been a request for the drive test data for mobile wireless. Uh, Corey is working on that. Ideally, that'll be available within the next few weeks. Uh, that's one message I've been told to attend. Uh, that the request was made to the Regional Planning Commission for, for that data. Or, Isn't it already available? Avail <laughs> it's a, available, but not in the form. There's some updates that need to be added to it for the drive test data. Throw away the money. Okay. Oh. So, communications committee. I'm assuming. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is Chuck, uh, and uh, we didn't have a meeting two weeks ago, unfortunately, because we did not hit quorum. Um, and as a result of that, uh, I have some things that are not yet sort of approved at the committee level that I want to talk about tonight anyway, because we need to get moving on them. Um, and so uh, we did have Jeremy, David, myself, we did a little working session. They provided some feedback on the plans I had put together. Uh, I was kind of hoping to get the plans up on, on a wall for you, but that tech didn't work out. So I'm just going to talk through it and you can inundate me with questions as, uh, as I talk about it. Uh, as part of this, um, I have assembled uh, an overall vision for the communication strategy for uh, the board and, and how we operate through various mediums and channels that we are going to be communicating to the public through. Um, I'm not going to go into that into a ton of detail right now because more important is a campaign for a loan and gift outreach plan that we need to start moving on implementing as quickly as we possibly can. To that end, I'm going to be passing around a sign-up sheet. I'm looking for volunteers to help with certain aspects of it. Uh, you know, the more we spread out some of this work, hopefully we can get it done. I'm hoping everybody will sign up for at least one thing. Um, if you can't, you can't, but uh, it would be very, very helpful if you could. Um, and besides doing a number of them, I will also be coordinating all of them and, and helping make sure there is integration between the people who are working on separate elements. So, um, in order to execute a loan and gift outreach campaign, um, what we are envisioning we will need to do is reach out to the public through numerous channels. The first channel is via emails. This, is, this will be to the survey opt-ins to provide details on how to invest. Uh, I would envision that we hit the public somewhere in the ballpark of three, four, five times over the course of the next few months. Uh, the truth of inboxes is that whatever is in top gets priority, uh, so it's really important to do that repeat messaging. Um, the next channel would be owned socials, so that is our Twitter accounts, our Facebook account, um, and there we'll be advertising that loans are, are available and requested, um, and we'll provide some great interest rates to drive to the website for more detail. Which brings me to the website. The website needs to have a little bit of content explaining the loans and gifts, the terms of them, how to go about to do them, and of course a call to action to get started and, and enter some kind of flow uh, to, to actually get the process going. That process needs to be designed. What, what actually happens if someone raises their hand and says, yes, I'm interested? Uh, so we need to figure out that uh, set of communication aspects. Um, offline, so I'm envisioning we would have some flyers for bulletin boards, libraries, town offices, schools, etc. One kind of standard format that you know you can re-up and print anytime you think it needs to go back out uh, to the communities. Um, front porch forum plugs from the delegates. So again, we'll have a single template that you can modify as you see fit to personalize it, but will minimize the burden of, of everyone having to write their own. Um, 
similar to Front Porch Forum, if there are other community-specific channels that are not as broad as Front Porch Forum, I know certain towns have their own little newsletters and, and online forums and things of that nature, so uh, those sorts of things will require very similar content. Um, and then uh, I'm actually proposing that we do a little bit of advertising via paid channels, likely paid social and paid search, but perhaps also display advertising and retargeting, uh, depending on um, how well the early indicators around paid social and paid search occur. Um, and to that end, uh, I am going to be making a motion around budget, but I'll get to that in a moment. The messaging pillars, what we're actually going to try to communicate to the community are that loans will be relatively high interest in the grand scheme of things because there is a, a decent amount of risk here. Uh, gifts are always welcome and are tax deductible. Um, and obviously the underlying message of supporting your local economy by helping bring Vermont up to speed. Um, so, the next steps, uh, the things we actually have to accomplish, we have to finalize the legal details and process for loans. Uh, I believe Jeremy is already working on that. Uh, we need to set up the ability to actually measure uh, advertising if we do go out with um, paid advertising. We need to author the supporting website materials. Uh, we need to create the actual flow for where uh, somebody, when they are interested, figures out what they do to get interested and get more information and actually begin the process. Um, bonus if it can be done through little green light, but anyway. Um, we actually have to write these emails. Uh, we have to send the emails. We have to put together uh, the social blurbs, which just requires kind of writing some of the social blurbs, but bonus if there's a, if there's anybody here who knows how to do design work and kind of make it look nice, because uh, social is a very visual platform. Um, the plugs for Front Porch Forum and other community-specific channels, a flyer, uh, the paid campaigns, if we approve paid tonight. Uh, and then uh, if, again, we approve paid tonight, uh, paid requires ongoing monitoring and optimization uh, to ensure that you're getting the best cost per lead as, as possible. Um, so this is going to go around. Feel free to put your name anywhere that you think you could provide value and, and provide help. Uh, the community communications committee would uh, be very grateful for the assistance. Um, obviously, we'll be doing a lot of this work as well. Which leads me to my next topic. Uh, we need at least one new member on the communications committee. We had someone step down already. Um, and uh, uh, I would like to point out that uh, we do need attendance when, when you know, people have signed up for the committee uh, because it's important work and we have a lot of work to do in the coming months to try to get these loans and gifts off the ground. Um, and there is a dial-in, so don't think you necessarily have to come in person. I know that can be a barrier sometimes. There's a Google Meet on the agenda every time. Uh, you can just join the Google Meet if you want to join the uh, committee meeting. Um, so uh, before we get to the budget side of things, I would like to see if there's anybody who would be interested in volunteering to join as an official member of the committee. Crickets, crickets. <laughs> okay. When are you meeting? Uh, we are meeting immediately following the business development committee meetings. Um, fourth, fourth Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Fourth Tuesdays. That's right. And we are. It's at the Hunger Mountain Community Hunger Mountain Co-op Community Meeting. Okay. So you can get dinner there. You can. <laughs> And so approximately what time is the meeting starting? Theirs usually wraps around 6.45, so okay. we're, we're starting right around there. And they're generally going about 45 minutes. OK. OK. Well, uh, I am going to move on since there aren't loads of people raising their hands. Um, so in thinking about uh, our advertising budget, we did put together a $5,000 advertising budget for this calendar year. Um, and in terms of advertising, uh, I see two important activities that we will be conducting uh, for community outreach. Do you want me to? Just on your last item, trying to find somebody. You may want to you know, send something out to the larger group. There's a lot of, um, particularly alternates, who yep. do not show up to every meeting and may not be aware that there's 
Can, can alternates serve in that capacity? Yes. 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 Okay, great. Yeah. I think they don't even have to be on the board. Yeah, right? yeah people can serve. General public can serve. Huh. I was just wondering that to about board member needs to cheer. Well, can we chair credit. Yeah. Um, great. Okay, that's that's great feedback. Thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, we, we have a $5,000 budget for the calendar year, and there are two activities that I think we'll be doing the, the vast majority of our outreach, one being in loan and gift outreach, uh, the other being as we have uh, a geographic region prioritized as a place we will potentially implement first, we need to start drumming up more community excitement about that at that point in time, uh, as well as starting a pre-subscription campaign. Um, yes? Sorry to interrupt, but this is a great, I, if you could give me like the one paragraph plea for help, I'd be more than happy to push it hard on our front porch and in the community. We've had a lot of people complaining lately. Okay. Um, which actually might be a good start for everybody because that might get us a little bit more. I think it's a great, I can probably a few people I try to guilt trip. Hey, you, know, you really, you really care about this. And this is instead of writing letters to PSP about it, consolidated, you stop us from the real. One. I was actually not aware that you could not be a board member and yeah. serve on a committee like that. So that that's so definitely. I just to follow up on this. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I feel bad, but I, I can't take anything on right now. But I, I know there's people down there. More than happy to put pressure on them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so yeah, give me a Yep. Yeah. I, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so again, um, the two campaigns that I think will support having spend uh, the loaning gift outreach, which we want to start immediately per that, that sign up sheet. And then the later, after the feasibility study and where we've identified a rollout strategy, uh, a service launch, advance notice, and pre-subscription campaign to try to start the pre-subscription ball rolling. Um, at this point in time, it seems to me like it would make sense to spread the money out uh, probably about $3,000 for the loan and gift outreach campaign and $2,000 for the service launch advance notice and pre-subscription campaign where we further spread it of loan and gift outreach, probably about $1,500 over the course of the next quarter, further $1,500 over the following quarter with $2,000 around about the Q3, Q4 timeline when we're ready to start drumming up that advance notice and pre-subscriptions. We can of course adjust those time horizons as, as possible, but those are sort of ballparks. So, to that end, I would like to make a motion that the board approve the communications committee to spend up to $1,500 for advertising uh, loan and gift outreach campaign materials, which will include uh, copy and imagery, uh, talking about the campaign, pointing back to the website and trying to drive people to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in that. Um, and uh, hopefully we can do it in a way that doesn't require approving each spend because the way uh, these advertising platforms work, you end up spending yeah. like 50 cents a yeah, day, right. you know, a couple, couple bucks a day, and that would be, that would be troublesome. So you know, where's if, my fox hole? <laughs> if, 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 if we could sort of pre-approve that spending to actually occur as well, uh, that would be beneficial. Is there a second? Second. The move and second. Any discussion? Questions? How much cash do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, do you know the answer to that? Jeremy? Speak into the cup. You have to speak. I was muted. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, what was the question? The question is how much do money do we actually have? Cash, yeah. As opposed to uh, we, have, we, have more, we have more than that, um, and we'll have more once we think from our innovation grant fund, uh, get back in the bank account. I seem to remember between the um, fundraising account and the, uh, the bank account, uh, seven and eight thousand. Okay. Yeah, we're solving. Thank you. Other questions? So how did you come up with the $1,500? What, what are we buying actually, pamphlets? And, and are we also buying design? And it, it would, the vast majority of it would be uh, online ads. Um, 
the pamphlets, I'm, I'm proposing that we try to design them ourselves. Um, so there'll be some printing costs associated with that if people want to get reimbursed for printing them for their communities. Um, but I, I'm proposing that we try to keep this as scrappy as possible and really just spend for the actual advertising placements themselves. And where is that? Uh, I'm thinking social media, search, uh, and some amount of display advertising online. We, we could explore some offline channels, um, but online is so, a lot so easier to hold the levers on in terms of your spend. So does it matter that I haven't a clue as to what you're talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So it, do you think that might be a, a considerable portion of the population out there that's not aware of what you're talking about? That is In, certainly possible. So how do you get them to go there, or is there an alternate? Well, let, let me ask you this. Do you search on Google? I do not. OK. Do you use a search engine at all? I use DuckDuckGo. Good for you. Me too. Um, I've never actually tried advertising on DuckDuckGo, so I don't know how <laughs> effective it is. But we are the minority. Most people use Google. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I would go to Google. I've never heard of DuckDuckGo. It's awesome. No. Duck, go. You can also just go to ddg.gg. DuckDuckGo.com. <laughs> there it is. That's awesome. You can make it be your search engine. I'm doing yeah. that right now. So, so you pay Google every time an ad comes up when people search for what? So Google, what would people be searching for that they would find us? Google is based, there, there's two different ways you can do Google advertising. Um, well, there's more than that. There's two predominant ways that we would focus on doing Google advertising. One is an auction model on keywords, where you bid on something someone searches. In our case, it would be key phrases like central Vermont internet providers, or uh, central you know, fiber in Vermont, or how do I make my internet faster, but where their location when they make the search is in central Vermont? Um, so there, there are levers like that that you can pull to then have a search ad show up next to the regular results in Google. The other way uh, you can advertise using Google is what it, what's referred to as their display network, which is um, the banner type images you see on various other websites as you're browsing around. And what they do is they use data such as your location and your search history <coughs> and what the content of the page is talking about to try to figure out if you're a good target for that. And this is all you know, their big engine that makes them a ridiculous amount of money. Um, and so it, it's a very effective mechanism. Generally speaking, on the search side of things, you can expect to, you don't pay based on how many people view it. You pay based on how many people actually click it, um, the cost per click model. And generally speaking, cost per clicks can be anywhere from $2 to $10 per click, depending on how competitive it is uh, that the, the particular keyword space you're, you're working on. Some, some biomedical ones are upwards of $40 a click, but they're, they're a little more rare. So are we paying $2 or $10? It's an auction. You don't you don't know until you get in there and do it. And that that when well, I mentioned you, you came up with fifteen hundred dollars, so you must have some. Um, the fifteen hundred dollars is the the upfront budget. We wouldn't spend that right off the bat. What we would do is we'd go in and design the campaigns that say, hey, let's target you know these keywords. Uh, you know maybe spend a. $15, $20 budget for a particular keyword, so, see how many people see it, how many people search for it, how many people click on it, and then most importantly, of the people who click on it, how many of them actually raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm interested in doing this? Um, because if nobody does that, then it's a useless keyword to continue spending money on. Uh, and, and so you, it, it's impossible to know exactly how that $1,500 would be spent in advance of getting in there and starting to pull the levers, which takes some ongoing management, which is the last item mentioned on the sign-up sheet. And if, if I could, if I could jump in here, too, we have $5,000 in the budget for this this year. 
I, and I, I know that I know the budget is not 100 percent, 100 percent like reality based. That we didn't really know what that five thousand dollars was for, but we were at least thinking about the necessity of this <clears throat> when we put the budget together last year. Great. Other questions, uh, comments. <clears throat> It could. Yep. You'd be, that would definitely be a channel worth investigating a little bit. Especially for certain communities that are big in there. Or important idea. Yeah. 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 Siobhan and I were talking about earlier uh, comparing Orange versus Moortown in terms of their front porch involvement. Apparently, Orange is not so much, and Moortown is hugely on front porch. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably have to figure out what communities are going to be potentially a good fit for it and, and do a little bit of experimentation. Don't hurt yourself. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so you're talking about the management. I'm assuming then, I mean, you've, you've got to be looking at the analytics mm -hmm. frequently and adjusting yep. depending upon what they're telling you. <laughs> so as we get towards the end, if, if in fact the $1,500 spend is approved, as we get toward the end, you're going to have a lot of data. And before we move on to the next piece, come back and talk to us yes. about how successful or how we had to change. <clears throat> and in fact, I, I think it would be warranted to do a checkpoint halfway through and, and make sure everybody is comfortable with what early indicators we have with the first half of that money. Good, Good idea. Um, we, we could certainly even split the budget and approve it in steps, if we, further steps if we wanted to, um, but uh, you know, that's yeah. more more to do later. Right, and we do have a motion on the on the uh, table uh, with a second, so we'll call the question in a minute. But I, Rob, I just, I just have one idea and one question. The first idea is, since you're you are CB Fiber is a nonprofit, well, have you explored uh, Google AdWord grants? You have I have a haven't. plan. They're pretty easy to get. Okay. But you have to have a plan. It's with Google for nonprofits. Uh, the second thing is messaging during this time that we're in at the moment, uh, telehealth and distance learning might be good uh, keywords to try to put out there. Yeah, yeah, we, we've thought about that already as well, so. Mm -hmm. but as well as nice letters to the local healthcare industry. I think we've been challenged a little bit with our qualifications of nonprofit and Google Okay. Yeah, I mean, because we are not a nonprofit. We're okay. governmental. So, so, so I, I looked into this already in the context of trying to get us um, uh, on Google <coughs> Sorry, G Suite, they call it now. And, yeah. and there you have to actually be a 5013C and in order to qualify. Uh, municipalities don't qualify. Right. But whether the AdWord grants fall into that as well, I haven't looked into that. So. I, I'm not sure. You mentioned that you can collect tax deductible donations, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that just by being a municipal organization? Yeah. Thank you. As I said, I'm here to learn from you, too. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah yep. one little more discussion. Okay. Item, and that is this is in the budget. $5,000. Yes. What is our motion? So motion is to start with 1500 to use over the course of the next couple of months to start the experimentation process. And because in, in online marketing in particular, you don't know what you are going to discover drives people to act until you do a little bit of experimentation, start dialing in the, the performing items. Can just be more specific than just say, well, it's the first 1500 targeted for online marketing purposes, or is it? Well, I, I did I did want to use some of that to reimburse printing costs on flyers and, and things of that nature for people. But uh, if we want to be more specific, we I could break it down more. But, yeah, but to me, this gets to, it's not clear from my understanding of the budget that this is necessary. OK, then. I, I appreciate the information of and, course. And, and doing this, and that's great. And I would just say, OK. Okay. But, but, and I'm, you know, if we're going to vote, that's fine, but I'm just not clear that you didn't have the authority to use a portion of your $5,000, especially after reporting what you're going to do with it. But I'm still follow through. I mean, I'll still certainly oh, participate yeah, okay. in motion. Yeah. Bob? Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm initially comfortable with the amount of $1,500. Uh, I am, however, uncomfortable with the lack of specificity of the areas that you might explore. 
I'm not necessarily suggesting that you have to come up with accurate ratios for how much money you're going to spend, but a blank check for 1500 without some expectation of what we're going to get is very uncomfortable to me. So if, uh, if the motion could be amended to some extent to say that the $1,500 is approved in principle pending a statement of the areas that you intend to explore without specifically citing how much, we would then be able to measure progress of your efforts against each of those areas in subsequent meetings. And I'm, a, I'm a great believer in progress measurement. So is that a motion to amend? <laughs> and, and I, How do you spell? And, yes, yes. And I, and, and I would, maybe I'm in my contrary mode, I would ask you not do that. Because just for the reason, we're not going to micromanage every, we have a committee that I would very much hope they report to us. This is their, this is where they are now, and as they move forward, we can always ask. So, how is your progress towards the sorts of targets you made? But rather than dictate every committee's actions, I, I didn't. Excuse me, but I didn't dictate anything. I said well, areas of investigation. I didn't say how much to spend or any specificity. But the, specificity. The, the amendment said pending them reporting back to us, and I would rather not have them have to report back to us in order to spend money. How do we measure progress for our investment? <clears throat> they will do that. I mean, as How, time, please. Well, you could again, see. that's the committee's role is to determine what their specific goals are as they take specific strategies. What do we think we're going to accomplish? And they're just getting started. And so if, I really if want to share that with us. That, that meets, that fulfills the concerns we, that I have. Uh, no, just a point of order. So the, we have a, a, a motion to amend we haven't had a second yet right so let's see if we have a second and then we'll open it up for discussion and see where that goes anyone willing to second to move this to discussion so it looks like the motion fails, fails for lack of a second so we're back to the original motion um, and you're, of course, challenging the idea that a motion is a. But, but, I, but I'm still suggesting we move forward with the motion. And okay. I participate just in, as as we as we progress through committee work, and in the future that every action of a committee doesn't necessarily need a motion for that committee to move forward. Okay. Um, just one thing to address your concern: uh, what the communications committee will absolutely bring back is performance data on that spend. So for the dollar spent, what channels were they spent in, and how many impressions did they have, how many leads did they drive, um, that, and that closes the loop. That's fine. Great. That closes the loop. Yep. I was planning on doing that anyway, but just want to call out that that is. But then you uh, you would have uh, prevented my opportunity to be a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> That's no fun, Michael. Being a nuisance is good. Want, I want to reinforce what Ken said. I think each committee is charged to do work so that the board doesn't have to do that work. It's responsible, each committee is responsible to the board and needs to report on what work it's doing, but um, those who want to track closely the details of committee work are always welcome to attend committee meetings or read the committee minutes um, and ask questions at the board of the committee chairs when they make reports. <laughs> and just another call out that we do have a call in for the communications committee. So if you don't feel you can make it in purpose, you're uh, in person, you're more than welcome to dial in and, and, and listen and, and participate. I think, um, again, before I call the question, I just make one comment that. You know, I, I agree with the idea that when, when we have a budget and we're a, a lot more familiar with that budget, how we're actually going to operate and what tasks, I mean, we, well, we know what tasks are falling to committees, but I think this is still all very new to us. So I think the idea of a committee coming, at least at this point, and, and asking for permission um, to spend some money is at least civil. Um, and we're going to we're going to be able to determine more about how to function. So I think that, um, and that 
you're right. That's where we want to be eventually is being able to say you're empowered to take care of these functions. You have a certain amount of money in your budget. Um, but for right now, uh, I think it, it gives all of us more of a sense of what that committee's doing, what they intend to do, and then as you said, the report back, closing the loop. Uh, we spent some money. This is what we got for it or didn't get. We've got some recommendations to do something else. So, um, To Siobhan's point, it's more than just civil. At a certain price point, it's required. There you go. Yes, yeah, so you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the question now? <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. aye. Motion passes. Were those both the aye. Aye. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so other than uh, one more plea to consider joining the communications committee because we have a lot of work ahead of us, uh, I will pass it on to Dan. Chair. Uh, go ahead. I was uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah, let me just make a, 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 again another comment in terms of, of committee members. Um, I had asked about the dates because if I've got to look at my schedule, Tuesdays are not great dates for me. Um, but if it looks like it might be possible, I would be interested in joining okay. the committee. I'll, so I'll just be in touch one on one. That sounds great. About that. Thank you. Okay. So we're now to business development committee. I'm assuming this is your item, David. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I sent out an email yesterday with a sort of a brief summary of what we've been up to and what we're trying to do, and some of our accomplishments. But I, I can summarize. How many people saw my email and read it? Good. good. So I'd prefer to get, take questions on it rather than summarizing it. But it's been really quite a busy time for the committee, uh, especially those that have been doing field work with a consultant. Um, and if I did not go on out in the field with the consultant, um, but several members did, and then they met with the committee, just one, just you, okay, Michael went out with them. But that evening, they came to the Business Development Committee meeting, and we had a good attendance, and they gave sort of an update and a summary of what they found in the field, and what kind of progress they think they were making. And then we had a, phone, a, a project team phone call with them last, Friday, so we're still trying to keep in contact with them every two weeks, and I can report that they're making, I think, decent progress, although, I mean, it is March, the first week of March, we're getting towards when the feasibility study is going to have to be done, and they're, they're working through the areas based on the criteria that we sort of sent out, I sent out the Jeremy, um, there's sort of a consensus criteria that um, uh, Jerry Bamidis sort of um, put together and we wanted to make sure that if there's no, something on this list of criteria that you think should be either more emphasized or less emphasized or there's something missing that you think ought to go into how inter -Isle is, you know, assessing the service areas that they're coming up with, we should know. <laughs> um, Michael. I have one thing to add to that. I don't know how many people read that little file of the criteria that's um, important because it's going to lead to selection of a particular set of towns or town or a piece of town. And, and, um, so that was one of the questions I had. Are we, are we assuming this is town based or just well, how do we get the most subscribers for the it's, best? It's region? not. It's going to be uh, amorphic areas that include. Portions of multiple yeah. towns, probably. Yeah. Um, but but I, I can't predict what it'll be, but those are the criteria. So, anyhow, it's really important for everyone to understand that now that it's a neutral. Of course, we all want our own towns and we all have our own ideas, but we've hired these people to, to choose for us, which is to propose for us to approve. The, the one thing I think that's missing is the key assumption that goes at the top of the list, and that is because of the Department of Public Services requirement and its um, big program, that we have to be cash flow positive within three years. And that's a very important and very limiting criteria. Very limiting. And so that's important to understand the context of the other things on the list. I don't, can I, I, I would think I have a dialogue in that. I mean, that's what the, the 
the grant says. Mm -hmm. Should we ask InterIL to give us a three year and a five year um, uh, return? I think that's the next step. So I think the feasibility, I think we all need to know that that's where this has to go for us ever to move forward in construction. But the identification of areas to do further work on, because that's what we're going to be charging them to do, is when they bring the feasibility work to us, we'll say, okay, go forth here, here, and here, and then bring us back the financials that allow us to meet that target of being cash flow positive. So yeah, that, we're aiming towards that, but we're not going to ask them to prove it on the first pass. That's the second pass, point. right? So, so, okay, I think we kind of asked them, but we can uh, we can let them off the well, hook. Well, but I, no, I think that's the business plan part. Okay, really attach some of the revenue numbers. Yeah, um, I, I think is this I. I think that's the second part. Well, I know that every time we talk to them, I'm sorry well, about uh, Well, we just have another question, Jeremy. Has, no, it's yeah. fine. It, I mean, it seems to me that we might not be able to get, you know, hard and fast numbers that we can, like, give to a bank and here's our business plan and give mm -hmm. us money. But we should be able to get, you know, and I think that we need to get some idea of which areas are going to be the most financially viable <coughs> areas. And we need to do that before we write the business plan, because if we spend all our money going after some area that maybe isn't the most financially secure, then maybe that puts us at a disadvantage later on. And I mean, yes, I want Plainfield and my house in particular to be built first. <laughs> that said, I would, or that, I would prefer to have this whole thing work out in the long term, and I, and I don't want to prioritize an area. You know, so yeah, the initial go around, they're going to do a pretty significant job on cost and revenue forecasting. Right. The business plan will get a little more detail, is my understanding. Um, but so far, you know, I, um, the thing, the question I raise, I don't know, you know how rigid that three year thing is going to be. Thanks. Well, well, that's, that's, that's a question for me to bring back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a huge issue. Um, anyway, we, we think they're we're pretty pleased so far with what they've been doing, what they've been telling us, and the technology. They've gone into lots of different things that, you know, hopefully in the feasibility study you'll see a lot of this coming out. Um, if there's any other suggestions for the criteria, I'd certainly welcome them um, before, because they're getting down to the nub right now. I mean, they're. They've gone through a couple iterations, and they're probably finalizing it this week. Uh, <clears throat> one of the most critical tools that we would use in evaluating a new business opportunity is the use of what we call cumulative cash flow curves. And you build those from day one, which basically shows a bathtub. You go net negative because you're using other people's money. You start to drag derive revenue, and you're revenue positive, but you haven't paid back your lenders or your shareholders, uh, I would highly recommend that built into the rollout selection process would be the discipline of cumulative cash flow curves. Mm -hmm. this, this has been one of the most successful ways of predicting well in advance whether a new business development is going to succeed or fail. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, David? Uh, that's on the um, the criteria. The other thing that I bring into your attention in my note yesterday was, um, uh, you know, Mike, uh, Steve is gone, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, but Greg and and um, Michael and Intrail are going to meet with where hopefully this week. I don't know uh, next week. Probably going to be a teleconference. Tele yeah, teleconference is fine. It may be next week because we need to. I've, I've had conversations with parties from WEC and parties from Interisle, and they're not ready to meet together yet. Okay. So we have to clarify some things so that the meeting will be productive. Cool. So I would hope, if not at the end of this week, it'll be next week. <coughs> The uh, the other, I mean, my note talks about progress with Alco and, and work, but the next thing that the committee spent some time with, and, and Ken has been leading this to the most part, 
Uh, next meeting, we should have a series or a, an action plan and time frame for all the different things we need to do once we get into our plan in terms of action items and stuff. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get that out to everybody before our ne next board meeting. But I think we're on a, as much as we're on a roll with communications, we're on a roll with, um, with what we're going to have to do to carry out what Interrail comes up with. So that's sort of, and I didn't hear back from anybody on the offer they made for producing these little updates based on the survey, but I'm willing to do the, yes. the data part of it if you want to write the, the, the town name and the, the percentages that re reflect on that. What's your, um, what's your intention on getting those distributed to the town? I'm going to put, well, that's a good question. Whether these go on individually onto the web page, is that, that, that that's what we yeah. had talked about. We had, we had talked about publishing them out on the web page. You know, maybe doing a post per town or something like that. So each town has their own uh, individual standing. Um, and then whether you want to print copies to have sitting at your town clerk's office or something like that, uh, uh, more up to you, I think. And and the full survey as well would go on the web. Uh, you and Ray were going to make a proposal about which data items we yeah. wanted to keep confidential. Yeah. Have you put that together yet? Yep. Yeah. You have? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, I can run that by everybody again. Um, but anyway, that was, um, <clears throat> I guess lastly, since it affected me, I, I put out something at town meeting. I don't know how many else put stuff out at town meeting. Um, I didn't get any responses to what I put on the table at town meeting, but I did get a, a comment mm -hmm. on the report in the town report that it's not enough. Ooh. People want to know more, and so, <laughs> including how, how much is the interest rate on the loans? <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> anyway, I, um, it's sort of my report. I don't know if anybody else has any question. I just. <clears throat> I got 20 surveys from the town clerk that she'd been sitting on since yeah. January. And, and Jeremy did, did. So how do you Did you, you put me, them in? No, is the site still up? That's yes, my question. The site's site, still okay, up. I will but get I, them in. Would you check with Jeremy because he, he thinks he entered a bunch in? From the town clerk? Jeremy, did you? Did I do what? <laughs> Orange Town Clerk survey forms. Did you enter them? Um, I, I only if they only if they mailed them to me. I don't. Oh, okay. so yeah, I got yeah. twenty from the clerk in the mail yesterday. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got some from Elmore. I got some from Roxbury. I entered all those. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Michael. Um, I just wanted to, we have 18 towns. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to tell you uh, what the field trip comprised. We visited 10 of the 18 towns, drove on lots of roads, yeah. visited six substa Velcro substations, rec, rec slash Velcro substations, um, and, um, and saw tower sites as well. So that in addition to, um, I was over a two day period, and in addition to attending the um, Business Development Committee meeting. So um, I think we got a lot of mileage out of those guys for those two days. Good, great. Okay. Um, just one more Go comment on the report out of the survey results. Um, should this run through the Communications Committee to have some sort of, if we're going to be saying something to the public, yes. We, yes. Should be saying something in there about, like, and here's something you can do to help. And yeah. that's, that's a good call. Let's, let's review on that. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Um, opportunity with CVEDC and what, Northern Borders, is that yours or who's? Ah. Um, so there is a, um, a Northern Border Regional Commission has this grant that was extended to all of Vermont, as most of you know by now. That was something that we were considering looking at um, uh, using to perhaps uh, partially meet or meet uh, some of our uh, some of our natural requirements for the Vita loan. 
Um, and I was, uh, I got an email from uh, Jamie Stewart at um, Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation, and he said, um, and this is something that he and I had talked about before in the past, but he approached me and said um, that they would be willing to be the nonprofit fiscal agent for this, for our grant request. And that if we we're interested in pursuing the grant in conjunction with them, um, that he seemed to be willing to do that. Now, I don't, um, I don't know if big picture that is a, um, that's good, bad, or otherwise different than us trying to apply on, the, on our own, but I suspect, you know, given the talk from our last meeting where we were wondering who is actually writing the grant, I think they may be willing to, that is, um, CBEDC may be willing to help us with the drafting of the grant and the management of the grant, which I think could be valuable. I, I didn't, I have not responded to him. I wanted to get the pulse of the, uh, the board before we move forward with, with anything in that direction. Okay. Could you repeat what? I, I, um, which which grant is he talking about? Northern, Northern, borders. Northern borders. Northern border, and that was with CBEDC. Yes. Is that correct, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. It was the, the Northern Northern border grant. Yeah. Okay. Just put contact. Craftsbury received a quarter million dollars from Northern Border to do their as you know, here, okay. to do some of their fiber work. Hi everyone. This is this is Jonathan. I'm having a real hard time hearing everybody. I apologize. No. Um, it's hard to make out any of the conversation. Yeah, sorry about that. It's our uh, low-tech approach to uh, a conference call. Um, something maybe we need to figure out a little bit better, but um, Siobhan? This is Siobhan. I just want the only woman in the room. This is, uh, I just wanted to say that if they are willing to help write grants. I'm like, yeah, uh, there's no strings on that. Like, you know, we have to sell things for them. I don't know, kind of strings that have. Big sale. Probably. Yeah, big sale. Yeah, we'll do a big sale. Um, then, yeah, I, I, I would like to know more information about that for sure, because if they're willing to help with that, that would be okay. awesome. Yeah, everybody's kind of nodding their head, so it looks like okay, so pursue it. Yeah, please pursue it. So I, I should just go ahead and talk to Jamie and see what the parameters of this are? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, the, we, so this, this may, may require us to, um, um, to, to put in a letter of interest before our next meeting. Can I get authorization from the board to submit a letter of interest on behalf of, of CV Fiber? It's due March 31st. It's been moved and seconded. Been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. You've got board approval. Super. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Looks like Jonathan hung up. Yeah. I think so. It's it's tough when you're in. Uh, Jeremy, while we have you on the line, why don't we move on to that um, the clerk position discussion that you wanted to? Sure. Uh, yes, please. Um, so um, Susan has stepped down both as a delegate for Woodbury and as the clerk. She is. She said she apologizes very much. She's sort of you know, reorienting herself in the amount of time she's volunteering, and she found that um, the one that she found most stressful, apparently, was this one. And uh, so entered her resignation immediately. Um, she has some materials to get to me that um, she got from uh, Becca, and I will be picking that up when I'm back in town probably uh, Friday. And, but this opens up again the requirement for us to uh, appoint a clerk. And like, some, somebody's just gotta, gotta own this. It's um, managing some of the paperwork, managing the, uh, uh, a little bit of the logistics, but we, we really just need somebody to, to step up and be willing to put in, um, you know, a couple hours a week on this. And re remembering, of course, that there is, we did, we're talking about siting, so this could be a, um, I, wouldn't, I would not say a well-paid position, but 
a base position in any event. Can we, can we add an ad in the paper again? Add in the paper. Um, Michael? Uh, I want to be forward. Um, hey, Chuck. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Worth a try. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly separating the clerk and the recording secretary functions might make that a little easier. And again, the idea that maybe we could I think hire. One of the things in our timeline is that at some point, and I don't know what the name of the position is, but we're going to need a manager. Yeah. And um, we're, we're getting pretty close. Um, so, yeah, we've got to get through these couple months, but we've got to really think about what specific. Um, responsibilities we want to have someone that dedicates a significant amount of their time to so that we can get to these multi million dollar projects. And this is no longer volunteer action. Great. Yeah, I think it's good. Well, I think that was a, what Susan was trying to say actually last, last time we were meeting that we should be spending money and getting good people rather than not spending money and having volunteers. I think that's your point. That yeah. I mean, we've met a couple of managers that have come and spoken to us, and they're getting paid, you know? Yeah. So they perform. Volunteers, some of us don't even come to the meetings, so, you know, I think if you pay people, they'll be here. Don't, don't we already have a line item for a stipend? Didn't we make that decision at some point? We, yep. we did, but remember last, last time we were here, we got it all, all upset about whether we were going to give Susan what was it, $2,500? Yeah, it didn't really go anywhere, as it I didn't recall, go anywhere. right? It yeah. just ended up being well the table. Isn't, isn't that right, Jeremy? Can you hear me? It's John Russell. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 did, we did put in money into the budget for, for um, covering you know, administrative costs, and we, did, and we were going to talk about um, a stipend for the, for the treasurer, I'm sorry, for the, the clerk. Um, and that ended up not, not happening. I mean, I, I didn't end up talking to, to Susan about that. Um, but yeah, no, we were we were talking about, you know, what does it look like a couple hundred dollars a month to, you know, cover costs and gas or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, this is something that the board has previously, you know, expressed willingness to support. So I don't see why we couldn't keep that on the table. Well, I think we should do more than Jeffrey, I, John, Russ, again, I think we should put some effort into it. Again, we, we put in ads. We got some people to respond to them. We, we weren't really happy with them. We offered the job to one person who turned it down. Um, so I think we should try again and make it be a more explicit ad that this is what we're looking for long term, not short term. Well, but also re remember that the people that did respond and that we, you know, we managed to turn up with our, our advertising. One, um, one of them said no. More than one of them just didn't respond to messages after I contacted them. Yeah. Um, and then Susan, you know, in the in the kind of the spur of the moment when we ran out of options, Susan stepped up and said that she that she would do it. But then she did. Yeah. You know, is this is this something that makes sense? Um, and to piggyback with uh, your efforts, Chuck, or do you think this needs to be handled separately? In terms of advertising to reach someone to to try to find more yeah. applicants. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, you know, if we're if we're going out and contacting people. And they, if they want to help, and maybe they, you know, maybe they don't have the ability to put, um, you know, put their money into it or pre-subscribe or whatever, you know, this is, I think, you know, the stuff that, you know, that, that we're all doing here, you know, whether we've you know, donated money or not, I think it's, it's a valuable and necessary um, service that, that we're providing, even when we're not donating. So I, I just don't know if, there, if there's some way to sort of piggyback this on asking people who want to contribute money in some form, if they would also be willing to contribute their time in some form. Um, 
let let let's let the communications committee have a chance to uh, come back with a proposal on that. Uh, but okay. I do think that makes a ton of sense to align those because they're both messages we need to get out to the public, uh, and they're asking for different things. So we just need to figure out how we balance them um, and and prioritize where we talk about which and why. Um, so. Jeremy, uh, I, I think it does make sense. I think your proposal is sound. Uh, we'll get back to you on that, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, that would be fine. Like, <clears throat> Michael? Um, there, there are quite a few of us volunteer board members who are putting in two, three hours a week as it is. I'm not suggesting any of us should be um, paid a stipend. We are volunteer members. Um, if we can't find a secretary, we need to pay them, then I'm going to support that. Um, but speaking to uh, the idea of a general manager or an executive director, we definitely are going to need one. Um, but we don't we don't hire one first and then find out how to pay for them afterwards. <laughs> we, we have some money in the bank, but we can't no, afford we to spend it on a, on a salary at this point. Yeah. So I think we should be working towards that. Uh, by the time we have a project, we want somebody to oversee whoever's, what contractors are doing it or what operator or consultants are running it. We do need somebody. Um, so that should come from either revenue or from grants. We might be able to apply for a grant that would create a position. Mr. Rob, just one question to put out there is a a few months ago, there was a question about whether Cuds wanted to host an AmeriCorps volunteer. Mm -hmm, that's right. I didn't know if anything happened with that with CV Fiber. We, yeah, we discussed we it. We did. Right, and I think it wasn't. No, there was a problem. There were, yeah, and we needed to have a very specific right. project for that person to work on. And I think the feeling at that time was that we, we didn't. We didn't have something that we could identify right now, and maybe down the road. So we'd, we'd have to supervise them. And we have to supervise them. Is that what you were going to say? And, no? and the yeah. third thing is it couldn't replace something we were already going to do and possibly pay for. It, it right. had to be right. an extra thing. An extra thing, yeah. So it was kind of tricky. Yeah, yeah. right. Someone else. Oh, Tom. Yeah. Um, What's the urgency on this? I think last time we did this, we had to have board approval to start advertising for positions. And if there's urgency, we'd like to have somebody in in the next month or two if we want to go ahead and give that permission here tonight so we can. Yeah. Last, yeah, we, I wrote up the I wrote up description for this and the treasurer and sent out everybody with the month on board. So, so, yeah. So, I remember you wrote that. and. Maybe you want to look at it again and see I, yeah. if there's a little tweaking because we didn't really get great people. We did get one person we wanted to do it and they said no, but. Yeah. We got like three responses to the clerk and we got Nathan, yeah, the treasurer. So. Right. And so that was great. Chuck. Yeah. Did, did we get any feedback about why interest tailed off on the position of the clerk after we received the applications or offered someone the position? Was, was the money not right? Was something about the position a red flag? <laughs> <laughs> any, any that was still volunteer. It was volunteer. Oh, okay. yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> And um, um, let me, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up the email from, um, uh, hold on. No, I mean, I don't, I don't have the email directly from, you know, the other, um, clerk candidate. Um, I just, I just remember her saying that she wasn't, uh, or that she wasn't going to be a good fit for it. I don't remember her saying that you know she wasn't. It wasn't going to be enough money, or it wasn't going to be this or that. I just, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. Tom, would you like to make a question? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to word it though. There is What's that? Just giving the communications committee the ability to go ahead and start. 
doing something, or is that doing something specific? Like, oh, here is the document that we would like to have be sent out. We all approve it. Or is it just good enough to say, yeah, we give you permission to go find somebody? Mm -hmm. um, so, let's just do it quick. Can I make a motion that Andy review <laughs> the copy that he previously did and, and, just and declares that it's just fine? <laughs> And that he hands that to the communications committee. He's on the communications committee. Oh, and, on the <laughs> and the communications committee follows up on what it said it was going to do already. Member of the and, and by next meeting, has a plan to advertise for these vacancies. I'll just go ahead and advertise. Yeah, yeah. 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 friendly yeah. amendment to move forward with the advertisement with the, with the hoped. Outcome on next meeting. Without there are report. candidates for us to select. Beautiful. Who do I search for? Clerk. <laughs> <laughs> second. Okay. We have a motion in a second. I found it. Call it. <laughs> he's found that. So he's half done already. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? Comments? Could you, could you restate the motion. Restate the motion. Uh, Michael, yes. Will you restate your motion? <laughs> We're going to do everything. No, no, no. Phil, Phil, can you repeat the motion? I can't hear Michael. <laughs> can Just repeat what he said. Yeah. He, what Michael, Michael basically says, we're going to do everything we did last time. And we're approving it now. And we're approving it, yes. Right now. <laughs> so the okay. wording of the motion is that the communications committee is tasked with coming up with the advertising and advertising and getting us applicants by the next meeting. I'd like to actually read you the proposed message we're going to put on front porch forum. <laughs> and, and you just copy that into the minutes and we can pretend he said it? Our town, town name here, is a member of CB Fiber. CB Fiber currently includes 18 communities. We will have to update that. Organized together to bring high speed internet. I, we can send it around again. So let Chuck and I review it. We'll send it around to everybody. Sure. Don't, this even is FYI, don't, just, don't, don't even bother to send it around. Well, what we did is we sent it to everybody with. You have to put it in your own oh, 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, but, so yeah. Chuck and I will get this out by tomorrow. Okay, so. There okay. you go. A friendly amendment. Can we put it in the world? And can we put it into BT Digger? And can we put it into the Times Argus? Those are the three. Maybe there's some who's Randolph has a paper. Yeah, I haven't looked at pricing on those, so I guess that comes back to a budgetary question. Of I'll pay for the one in the Times Argus and, and in the world. How's that? Done. We accept the contribution. Okay. Generous donation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I second the amendment. Okay. <laughs> There's an amendment and then a second. Discussion about the amendment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The motion for the amendment passes. Shall we hear the, go back and, uh, and, and uh, vote on the original question? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. So sure. there, the marching orders, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Moving on. Gary owes me, so that'll be free. On <laughs> <laughs> ongoing discussion uh, about the 2020 timeline. Was, was there something specific you were thinking about here, Jeremy, or just following up from discussions we've had over the past yeah, couple of Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really about the, continuing the previous discussion to make sure that there weren't any loose ends. I mean, there was the, there was the, list, the list of questions that, that went out, and there was you know, some discussion about um, you know, how to get them answered and who's answering them and whatever. I just wanted to make sure that there's, if there's anything still um, that we need to look at getting an order that's not already being you know, tasked to somebody, that we make sure that we that we do this um, or that we put it out on the, in the discussion right now. I think for the next meeting, we'll have a much more explicit list of the, the tasks um, that will need to be accomplished to move forward, but we wanted to wait for the feasibility study to help tee up a lot of that because it doesn't, it, it didn't, it was lacking context absent that. But I do think that's our, the business committee's goal is to have a pretty concrete um, set of responsibilities, actions, and put it on some kind of timeline so we can see where this is going. Okay. 
Anybody want to add any more to that? When is the expected time period for the feasibility study to be delivered? Three weeks. Three weeks from now. So at the next meeting, we need to be making decision based on that. Or is it more just some? Some, some decisions. Okay. So that's where you're saying we need to pass out the email or something like, here's what's going to need to be decided. Come yeah. ready to make decisions. Okay. Well, you know, David did a pretty good job. Yeah. His previous emails. <laughs> it's a good job, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> any, any more on 2020 timeline? It's sounding like we're kind of in a holding pattern right now until we see the feasibility study and then other things will be determined once we get a clearer picture what's possible or what's feasible. Okay. Are you raising your... Oh, no, I'm just leaving my hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so that brings us pretty much down to the end for tonight. And um, we'll do a quick round table and um, be out of here early. John, you want to start off? I'm starting... I'm Jonathan right now. This was a note from Jonathan. Hey folks, sorry I hopped off. The conversation was unintelligible. For some reason, the quality degraded significantly over the course of the call. Maybe we can invest in some teleconferencing technology for future meetings, especially with the adventure of the coronavirus. Advent, thank you. So I told him I'd pass that around on the round table. And for myself, I just wanted to say, I liked the inner IO people. I felt very comfortable with how they were talking about things and the information they were giving us. And so I was really happy about um, meeting them and, and that they went off the road in orange just tickled me for some reason. I, 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 Washington does my fault. <laughs> and that's <laughs> y'all heard enough from me. Too. Me too. <laughs> good, good. I'm good. Um, I'm really glad that the department sent somebody today. And um, I think the biggest message to take back is that the three-year obligation, if we could define it a little more uh, liberally, it would be really, really helpful for the trans. Um, I already forgot that phrase, Bob. I get the, the cash. I get cumulative, the cumulative cash. Sure. What? Oh, it's sure. a, yeah, it's a, it's a technique. I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send something to David, and okay. he can do with it. I basically taught a course at Sloan on cumulative cash flows as a man so, management technique. So it would be great for Rob to take yeah. so, so look, you, you know how when they do, when they when they propose slashing Social Security, they talk about finding new coal or and things like that. We want to find different things <laughs> for how to look at three-year cash flow, so, so that it's achievable. Well, cumulative cash flow varies in, in, to a great extent based upon the difficulty of the technology you're trying to develop and the rate of customer access, uh, acceptance and deployment. And so the curve is different for every project, yep. and that's the way you want to present it to your major investors so that you can begin to set the expectation for return on investment. Because at the end of the day, if they don't have a reasonable expectation, you're not going to get in their wallet. Good point. I haven't yeah. touched a video game since college because it ate up so much of my time. Yeah. But I just got gifted a new online video gaming system, so if we can speed this up. <laughs> <laughs> Alan? A yeah, modern I, man. I, I just was really struck today by the number of news items I was reading about businesses, but especially schools who are going to be closing their physical campus and they're going to have kids do virtual learning. I mean, for some kid who goes to pick your college and returns home to wherever in one of our towns, if you don't have high-speed internet, you could yeah. be, you, you would really be a disadvantaged person in the next several weeks, if not months. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting case for why this stuff is important. I encourage you to make that case to the media and to your legislators and anybody who will listen. So. And I will second that. I took a call from my son. His college just was closed. And so, fortunately, I'm in Montpelier. He'll have high-speed internet, but I did the same thing. What about the kids that are living out in the country? You know, we pay a lot for tuition, and they're not going to be able to access it. One other topic, though. Um, the merger of T-Mobile and Sprint. Mm -hmm. 
They promised to spend $15 billion in rural America to strengthen 4G um, and ultimately 5G connectivity. And uh, in my work for the state, one of the things I'm also recognizing, maybe we all know this, the proportion of money that people are spending on fixed internet service compared to what fixed internet service plus mobile communication is, is shifting to mobile. And with the expansion of 4G and 5G, that shift is going to even continue further. And to me, that has two implications. One is understanding our business model and where we might have some challenges in terms of getting long-term customers. But also, and I've raised this before, I know it's challenging, but also to the extent that we install fiber, fiber is going to be necessary to hook up every one of these 4G and 5G transmitter stations. So is there an overlap between the work that we do in terms of installing fiber and the expansion of the mobile wireless communications. I think we're really going to keep, keep need, need to keep our eyes and ears tuned to that topic over the next couple of years. Uh, to, to that point, we should begin to think seriously about deploying both technologies, particularly in Vermont, where line of sight transmission gets interference. I mean, I see in Elmore, I see in Wilkett, and a number of other communities where you might have the best way of delivering the service to bring a pipeline in to a bunch of towers and then distribute it using RF. We might want to consider whether our model is hardwire, fiber only, or whether it also includes uh, radio frequency broadband. We'll find out soon. Yeah. I, I envision that model myself. So, going along with your point, there's also Starlink. So, Starlink. Yep. Right. Yeah. That <laughs> doesn't get shut down by the astron astronomers. Not going to happen. <laughs> He's got more money than they do. <laughs> That's for sure. For shovel ready project for the next American Recovery Act. It's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe this year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.